Hi. In this video, I would like to talk about the task of detecting personal identifiable information, which is commonly abbreviated as PII in short. Now, the reason why this task is interesting is related to labeling. If you're looking at the logs of a virtual assistant, it might be a good idea to first pre-process the data before you show it to someone else such that they can label. In this sense, identifying personal identifiable information comes down to the named entity recognition task. If, for example, I am dealing with a pizza assistant, then you can imagine that some of the information that might pass by is a person's full name together with their address. And if I'm dealing in the realm of finance or insurance, then I might have bank account numbers, social security numbers, and as you might be able to imagine, this information is relatively private and also relatively sensitive. So there's something to be said that instead of showing this information in our logs, we might be able to have a mask for the name as well as a mask for the address. If we had these masks appear in our logs, we should still be able to do a whole lot of labeling, but it would be a less risky situation because we're being careful with sharing this personal identifiable information. Now, the goal that I have for this video is to demonstrate that this is a very hard problem. And what I would like to do in this video is explain why it's hard. And I would also like to highlight how these systems tend to break. So what I'm going to do is I am going to have a look at a library. I've chosen to go for the Presidio library made by Microsoft. And I'm going to poke around in it just to get an impression of what we can and cannot expect from a system that is trained to find personal identifiable information. Now, the reason that I'm using this project as an example is partially because this project came up first in my Google search results, but also because in general, I think it's a likable project. The idea is that we're able to give it text and that Presidio is able to identify entities inside of that text that might be sensitive. And it's then able to mask these appropriately. One of the things that I like most about the project is that the readme on GitHub does come with a warning. It clearly states that Presidio can help identify sensitive data in unstructured text, but because this project is trained using machine learning models, there is no guarantee that all information will be found. And in general, I think it's really good to have a readme file that highlights weaknesses of a machine learning approach. Another thing that's really great about the project is that it has an online live demo that we can play with. And the demo is shown here. What we're able to do is give some input to the app and then Presidio will mask the text appropriately. For example, we can see here it says, hello, my name is David Johnson, and this is masked by this person tag. We're able to select different kinds of personal identifiable information from the sidebar here, which means that we can also turn on and off some of these things we may or may not want to anonymize. For example, I could look for a phone number, which is something that we are detecting over here, which is being masked. And the moment that I turn this off, we can confirm that it's no longer being masked. If you're interested in learning more about the different entities that are supported, you can go to this supported entity section in the documentation where you can learn more. One thing that's nice about the library is that it does an effort to recognize different standards in different countries. For example, if you live in the United Kingdom, then you might have a NHS number, which is referring to the National Health Service. The way that this is detected is by a regex together with some machine learning that detects context, but this field type is different from its Australian variant. In Australia, they don't have the NHS, but instead they have a Medicare number. And it's good to see that the library supports different kinds of entities that you could go ahead and detect. So there's a lot of intents that are supported. We also see that there are IP addresses as well as nationality, religion, and political groups. But we should acknowledge at this point that it seems like English is the only language that's actually supported. Now that we know what sort of behavior we might be able to expect from this system, let's 
poke around and see if we can find some of the areas where it may start falling short. So let's poke around by putting in some text here. Let's suppose that I'm saying, hello, my social security number is, and then I'll give it a random security number that I've been able to generate on the internet. So, so far so good. It seems that it's able to detect a United States social security number, but you kind of see a concern here as well. If we have a look at the finding tabs over here, it seems like it's able to detect more than just one thing. This pattern over here could be a social security number, but it might also be a phone number, and it's hard to say up front. In hindsight, we could say, well, because the words social security number is being used here, we might be able to write some extra logic. But I hope already this one example demonstrates that rule-based systems have their weaknesses in this regard. And let's see what happens if I actually remove the dashes. In this case, it seems to be more likely that we're dealing with a phone number than with a social security number. But even more likely, we seem to be dealing with a Australian ACN number, which stands for Australian Company Number. Now, we could turn that off if we know for certain that we're only dealing with instances in the United States, so that helps. But this is a weakness of many pattern recognition tools when it comes to detecting entities. Very often, a single pattern might be able to fit multiple entities. I could try to repeat myself by adding a couple of spaces in between. And here we can see it's able to detect social security number again, but it really depends on where the space is, which is a little bit awkward. There is another weakness of these pattern recognition tools, and that is that they can be quite leaky. So let's say that now my bank account is, and again, here's a fake bank account number. What I'm showing you here is a EBAN code, which is an international banking number. And it's able to detect it. And once again, under the hood, I'm pretty sure it's using a pattern recognition tool to do this. So that's fine. But what happens now if the user accidentally makes a typo? Let's say we accidentally add an extra one at the end here. Well, now we are no longer matching the pattern. But I would say that this is still something I would like to see masked. A bank account with an extra character in it still has a lot of information that I might not want to share. And this is also a weakness of pattern recognition tools when it comes to detecting personal identifiable information. There is also the fact that language just works in a way that isn't always easy to detect. For example, suppose I were to say, hi, my name is Vincent and I am a Christian. Christian refers to a religion here, which again would be information that I would like to mask, and Presidio is able to do that. So I would argue that this is good. However, the word Christian is just one way to indicate that you belong to a certain religion. If I were to rephrase this and say, hi, my name is Vincent and I believe in Jesus, well, in this case, I would argue that I'm still communicating that I am a Christian, but I believe in Jesus is not something that's picked up by the model. And this is unfortunate because this is the way language works. You are able to describe many different things in many different ways. And to assume that we're able to catch all of these separate instances is a bit of a stretch. Another thing that we're seeing here is that it's having a bit of trouble detecting Jesus as an entity. And here I could argue that that's a little bit strange because this is a fairly common name, especially in Latin America. And that brings me to the topic of name lists. What I could do is I can take a list of names and put them here as input text to see if we can maybe find names that are easier and or harder to detect. The name list that you see here is from the Equity Evaluation Corpus. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to poke away at the model to see if there are names that it's having a bit of trouble detecting. And there's quite a few instances where it's failing. One type of failure is that it's just not able to detect the name at all. So, hello, my name is Adam. Adam is not detected, and we can spot that here. Same with Justin and same with Andrew. However, we also see that sometimes a person's name is mistaken for a location. 
That is something that we see happen here. I want to stress that this is indeed a difficult problem because there are city names that could also be person's names. In fact, the topic of detecting names is so hard that in this series of videos you'll be able to find a separate video on just the topic. But there's something about names in general that we should focus in on here. The performance that we see on this name list isn't perfect, but at least we do see that it's working most of the time. However, this might be due to the fact that we have capital letters here in all of these separate names. And what I could do is repeat the exercise, but without the capital letters. And the moment that I do that, we are way off. With no capitalization, we only detect the name a couple of times. And that's a big issue if you consider that we're interested in removing personal identifiable information from chat logs, where spelling mistakes are common, and it's also very common that people don't bother writing capital letters. And just to mention, this phenomenon isn't limited to Presidio. There are many models out there that have a lot of trouble detecting a person's name if there is no capitalization happening. So just to give one extra example of this phenomenon, I am now at the Hugging Face model hosting platform where I'm checking out the Flare NER English model. And here what I'm doing is I'm giving it this bit of text to infer. And hopefully it is able to detect the name Vincent as well as this location, Zilst. But when I hit compute, nothing seems to be coming out. If I were now, however, to change this letter Z into a capital letter, then suddenly it's not only able to detect Zilst as a location, but it's also able to detect Vincent as a person, which it wasn't able to do before. Now, part of what we're seeing here can be explained by having a look at the data set that Flare has been trained on. Flare has a pretty good F1 score on this data set, but this data set in particular is a data set with reasonably well spell examples. And that is why examples like this are relatively hard to parse if we don't apply proper spelling, which includes capitalization. Given the weaknesses that we've seen, you might agree with me that we shouldn't put all of our trust in these general entity detection systems. Even if they're using rules or if they're using machine learning, they are bound to fail in certain instances. But maybe there's another way of thinking about the problem that might be very helpful. You see, so far we've mainly been focusing on these general entity detection systems. And maybe it's good to consider that the problem that you are facing with your assistant is probably a bit more specific. It might still be that these general detection systems can offer a good starting point. There might be some overlap between our use case and what these systems can handle for us. But the moment that we recognize that we might need more is also the moment that we can start thinking about what is actually specific about our use case. For example, let's say that I'm interested in making a assistant for the Dutch market. Well, in that case, I probably have a list of cities at my disposal. I can probably also exclude all sorts of entities that aren't relevant to my location. And I might also have a database at my disposal with information about my clients that I can just cross-reference. The main point of this video is to emphasize that these general entity detection systems may fall short, but how they fall short will be very specific to your use case. So that means that it's still an exercise of understanding your own data better. You can still use tools like Presidio, Spacey and Hugging Face as a starting point. I might also argue that it might be a good idea. However, the main observation that I do want to part with is that you should always think about what's so specific about your own use case and to also focus in on that.